lie ahead when it comes to Q2 earnings from the IT universe. Devang Mehta of Spark Private Wealth is with us. Devang, uh, thanks for joining in. Great to have you on the show as always. So since uh, Reema has really set this up, let's actually start with IT and get your sense on things. Considering that these, uh, you know, multi-year large deal announcements, they have been coming through. But uh, I guess one is not expecting too much by way of just Q2 top line growth. How have you been positioned on the IT space, mid cap as well as large cap? Thanks, Survi, for having me on the show. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on CNBC as always. Uh, I think, yes, uh, uh, Rima was doing a, a good sort of a quick check on what the numbers would pan out. I think the Q2 narrative wouldn't change much. Uh, uh, there is a decent pro uh, pro possibility uh, that probably the revenue numbers would be muted, the constant currency growth, uh, which we're talking about, uh, around, say, 1% type of growth for most of the companies, and some, they might also be a bit of degrowth as well. Uh, I think most importantly, yes, deal wins were very good. Uh, the Nifty IT has done extremely well. If you compare it to the benchmark, uh, I think most of the stocks have bounced back. Uh, that that was one thing because the valuation contraction was huge. Most of these companies were trading around 30, 35 times and the, the valuation, uh, they are now at around 17, 18 times. Most of these companies are now probably uh, uh, trading below their mean uh, uh, or, the, or the average valuation which they, they would have traded. So I think, yes, there is some bit of value to be offered here. Uh, but most importantly, how this deal wins have transformed into revenues uh, in this quarter, how, how the pipeline is uh, and the body language and the commentary of the management on what how the slowdown is going to affect them. Right now, we are seeing that there is not much of a slowdown across the US uh, uh, for, for as such. Uh, Europe, yes, we have seen a bit of slowdown. Uh, the companies which cater to retail and telecom. I think they would probably be a little bit of jitters over there as such uh, uh, because there is an inflation, there is a higher for longer narrative uh, which is going on over there. So my sense is that uh, it will be a mixed bag. Uh, but having said that, a lot of large cap IT as well as mid cap IT uh, present itself with good opportunities if the body language and the commentary is good. Uh, and if numbers are not great, but if, if the commentary is good, I think there's, there's something uh, on the table to be made for the next two, three years. Mm. Uh, Devang, uh, do you look at textiles? Have you looked at textiles recently? Because there is a lot of expectation riding on the India-UK FTA. So off late, we're getting a lot of people saying that go out and buy textiles on the back of this uh, you know, FTA with UK. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that if you've looked at textiles and what this FTA could mean? I haven't tracked uh, as such. Uh, uh, oh. Very might be difficult to comment on the subject. Okay. Another space that you're very bullish on is the entire Capex industrial theme. Uh, you've spoken about it in the past. Can you talk about how Q2 is likely to be? Are we going to see some upgrades in earnings expectations? Or do you think uh, the street has already priced in way too much? I think there's a very decent probability that there might be upgrades for this uh, so-called uh, CapEx space. I think we are seeing a confluence of uh, uh, private CapEx uh, along with public CapEx. Public CapEx has been extremely strong. We know uh, 10 lakh crore has been spent on infrastructure and other type of allied uh, offerings. You know, the railway CapEx has been extremely strong. Uh, most of the companies which uh, which which scattered uh, in the infra as well as the capital goods space, uh, power, allied, ancillary space, uh, uh, I think there's been a great order flow. Uh, you look at companies like LNT or Siemens or an ABB, I think there have been historic uh, uh, type of order flows for these companies and execution has also been uh, quite strong. Even if you look at the bearing space or for that matter, even uh, energy space or, or the green revolution that people is talking about, anything that has to do with green or alternative power, India already has a target of around 450 gigawatts uh, till 2030. So I think this space uh, right now is getting into a structural type of a zone. Uh, and, and the numbers probably not this quarterly number entirely, but over the next four, six quarters, I think there will be decent traction. Uh, we will see spending more and more as we approach elections. Uh, and even private uh, uh, capex, if you talk about, a lot of people are quite uh, enthusiastic and, and spending over brownfield and greenfield projects. So yes, this is the space probably to be in for the next three, five years and ROEs of a lot of companies we have seen expanding as well. Oh, absolutely. The space definitely seems to have got, you know, everybody's attention off late. Devang, the other pocket I want to ask you about is the real estate stocks. You know, they've been doing very well. You had uh, Prestige, which released its Q2 business update. In fact, we were talking to them this morning as well. They're looking at 20,000 crores in terms of pre-sales just for FI24. How would you play this? Would you play this space first of all? And if yes, is there a region specific uh, way to look at it? Would you look at, you know, the luxury players? Uh, how would you approach it? 
Pavitra, absolutely. I think uh, uh, we have seen uh, the space coming out after a, a long period of hibernation. And uh, uh, the last couple of years, uh, possibly post-COVID, uh, if you talk to the management and if you listen to the commentaries, uh, I think the luxury home sales have just bounced back uh, and, and they're doing extremely well. So if you if you just go in the market and, and, and search for a very good quality uh, three and a four BHK, ideally that there, there's hardly any inventory left on the table. Uh, so yes, good times are there for the real estate uh, players, at least in the uh, uh, metro cities. Uh, I, I, I saw a couple of updates as well uh, by, by the renowned uh, uh, property uh, makers, the real estate uh, people. I think they all are, are, are gungo about the next uh, two, three, four quarters uh, of sales. Uh, uh, ideally, how we play uh, this space is more to do with the proxy. Uh, and yes, it, it might sound cliche, but a lot of this building material uh, stocks uh, or, or this businesses, be it the fast moving electrical goods space, be it polycab, Hevels, just giving certain examples, uh, uh, be it even, even the paint companies or the adhesive companies or even, even ceramic companies and cement. Uh, uh, I think this, this will see a good bit of traction. Even housing finance companies have, have sort of not shown that bit of traction as, as the market has shown in, shown in the last uh, three, four months. Uh, my sense is that if you want to play the real estate theme, uh, you can play it more with this ancillaries and proxy play rather than getting into real estate stocks much uh, revenues they are going to hook in a quarter is always going to probably be a, uh, a question mark. So uh, ideally, yes, this building materials, home improvement uh, as a play, uh, which has, has seen some uh, could probably uh, fetch a lot of uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, ideas over the next, uh, I think, uh, couple of years. Okay. All right. Uh, got that, Devan. Good talking to you today as always. Thank you very much for uh, joining in and we we'll look forward to the next uh, chat. Well, on that note, we have to take a very quick break as we do that. Here's a